two changes. And I also read my lady home here. And I might have uh, this is not in the project we have been working with uh, user changes for several years. So for me the most interesting part of this project is the applications. Let's start with what is this. This is the application of the company I work for. So I will create a new project. It's not necessary for you to pay attention to the application or anything there. To get the idea. This is just a new empty project. So I will, as an end user, start issuing some commands. For instance, I will create here an object and below this uh, some other object. And I will, for instance, duplicate this one and move this from here to here. So, every command, every command I perform gets registered in a user changes log. I created, there are some actions, I created a, the first ob object named R, the second was uh, W below R, then I duplicated R, and then I moved the first, second object to the second, uh, to the copy. So this is similar to what happens when you do some programming in Smalltalk and uh, the change log captures all your, the methods you create or change, class uh, additions, uh, removals, renamings. <coughs> so what we are doing is using the same ideas and techniques to capture end user changes. What's the difference between logging programming change, programmer changes and end user changes? The difference is that as a programmer, I have, I don't know, a dozen of commands. I can create a method, remove a method, create a class, remove a class. It's a very limited uh, set of possibilities that is also pretty stable. It's the same from, has been the same essentially the same number of commands or decades. Uh, in an application, there are thousands of commands. And applications evolve all the time, so we are removing and adding new commands almost every day. So, it's not that easy, but the same techniques prove to be adequate. So, because of your experience with the small talk change log, I will sh try to show you how this works uh, in channel. So in general what happens is that through the GUI, in the GUI we have panes. Every pane has a model. So this is a pane which is composed of other planes. There is a model here. So the technique we use is to add a wrapper around the model. The wrapper will capture any user change. So if the user comes and changes the model, uh, the, the pain will uh, treat the wrapper thinking it is not a wrapper but it's model, the actual model. So we'll send a messi the message the cor corresponding to the command to the wrapper without knowing that this is a wrapper. This wrapper now will ask if the change actually changes the model because when the user is uh, just looking uh, or browsing the application the, the pain is asking for names or values of variables, many things that are commands but don't change anything. So we have to remove them and just capture those commands that change the model 
So if that command happens to change the model, we log this. This simple and the programmer is almost 100% uh, transparent. The programmer doesn't pay attention to anything of this mechanism because the wrapper makes all of this transparent. Is this a generic wrapper or is it specialized for the... It's, uh, no, it's specialized for this application, but this wrapper, uh, we will see in more detail this thing. So, after logging the change, <coughs> the message is sent to the repeat. So, let's view this in more detail. We have a GUI, and the GUI sends a message to the rock. The rubber generates, here, has the opportunity to generate the change, to transform the message into a change. Then we validate the change, because we want to make sure that we will be able to replay the change later. So this, is, this validation is mostly for debugging purposes. If it doesn't validate, then the programmer knows that the mechanism is not working very well in this particular case, and it requires some attention here. Uh, if it validates, we store the change, which is now an object, into a list of changes, the change log, which is another option. And of course, we then send the message to the model. The interesting thing is that uh, these changes can be sent to a text file using the same regular chunk format for file out. This is important because later we will be able to use the uh, regular file in command to load the changes back into the system. Let's see uh, the structure of a change. Here we need something more elaborated because uh, there are thousands of changes. So we have to pay attention to the structure of how we are going to capture every change. A change is essentially a message with some more information. It has a timestamp because it's good to know when the changes happen. Uh, it has an author and the selector the message, the name of the receiver, and not the receiver because we want to transform this in text, and the argument. No. Uh, these are the changes that an end user will uh, get by using the application. So, for instance, here, this change, uh, if we inspect the change, it has a timestamp, the user, uh, the name of the receiver, the selector I, I use, some arguments. No, 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 this is, I'm trying to explain the, the, the model I use and how it, it is implemented. That's really for, that's really for the, the object and the object. Okay. Yes. So, uh, well, the important thing here is, I, I said something about validation, I'm always talking about validations. So, here there are many validations, but the most important ones are, are the timestamp is not new, the author name is not empty, uh, we have actually a selector for the message. <coughs> the name of the receiver can be resolved into the actual object, and that receiver, once resolved, can respond to the command or the selector, and uh, we have the required number of arguments. This is a change that validates, okay? And we will associate 
a rechange to the change log to, be, to give it the change some context in order to replay it later. I said not the object but the name of the object. So one requirement for this framework is uh, having is that you have to you need uh, to be able to name objects in a way that then you can retrieve the objects from their names. Of course, you are not going to name all objects in your systems, just the main objects that are the root in the GUI, because those objects are exposed to user commands, and these are the only ones that need to be resolved. But a uh, resolution mechanism is, I don't know, you have some structure or branch or network of objects, so you have to uh, identify some path to have the full path from the root to the object. For instance, here the path is object A, B2, C2 from the root R. I'm not going to <coughs> um, provide more details on naming objects, but I think that is something that everybody can understand very well. So, the wrapper. So, someone asked me about the wrapper. The wrapper is um, an instance of uh, a class that has no superclass, like conventional wrappers, <coughs> and has two instance variables, the rep and the change log, where the, the wrapper is reporting. And has it contains all the commands that the user can issue through the GUI. So this class has I don't know one thousand methods. Okay, all the commands that the that users can issue from the by using the GUI. So it's not very elegant to have one class with one thousand methods. But actually, these methods are automatically written by the mechanism. It's, they are not written by the programmer. And all of them are similar. As a wrapper, we use, or these objects use, and they does not understand mechanism. Assume that a, a programmer creates a new GUI for some model. So the first time someone uses the GUI, a new command is sent to the model. If the wrapper does not understand that command because the programmer didn't wrote, didn't write the, the method, then does not understand will be sent. Okay? At that moment, we. Uh, the framework will ask whether it should be a, 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 a change for that method. This is uh, the question about whether the, the command is changing something in the model or not. If it should build a method, then builds the method and then sends the message. So, using does not understand, we are adding all the methods to this class. The interesting thing, at least to me, is that only one wrapper, only one class for the, all the wrappers for any possible model in any possible application is enough. You don't have to reproduce a part of your model class uh, uh, hierarchy uh, with wrappers. Only one suffices. Let's see an example. For instance, here I have this option. So I will rename this to a different thing, okay? So I click here and rename R to R, I don't know, uh, A. So if I come here, I will find the rename to command captured in the change it log, okay? So, what happened is that uh, 
this method in the wrapper class was used. Now assume that we are going to rename for the first time, so we don't have this method. Okay? If we rename again, then the wrapper will not understand rename2. So we it will create the method I just removed. Like this. Come here and rename this back to R or anything. So this is the question. Is this command changing anything? Yes, it's changing the name. So I as a programmer answer this with yes. So if I come back here to the class and I refresh this, I should find this one created without typing. Yes, please. The dialog we see, is that what uh, should be uh, method? The dialog is, yes, exactly. Does it should be better, does it do more, or does it only show that dialog? No, that's a lot of things because it only asks, um, there's many rules to know when the question doesn't make any sense. There are uh, selectors that you know don't change anything. Okay, we have black whiskers. Yeah. Okay. So here is essentially the, the method uh, that this has created. So, look at, now at, at the structure of the, the classes we have been used. We had one class for the wrapper, one class for the change, one class for the change log, which is a list of changes, and there are some relationships and one class for the validator. Okay? Which is not essential but is important. So only four classes, one of them created almost automatically and the other one are very easy, very simple, give a lot of functionality because we can now um, capture and replay any change made by the user. So this is simple and very powerful. So, how we replay changes? Let's show this. I will save these changes in file. Okay. Now I will start a new project, an empty one. <coughs> this is empty. So, I now will try to replay the changes here they are so I select for instance this one and I apply the change validated, it's ok so when I come here I can see the option ok now if I try to apply the same again in this particular case because this is creating an object with a name if I try to apply it again, it should fail because it's creating another option with the same name so we will have a name collision. So this uh, validation is needed here, so when I apply for the second time it's rejected. Okay? But if I apply them all, then I get again what I had in the first time. Please. Do you use the same for undo actions also? Yes. We will see. This is uh, in the part of applications. Undo, which is actually only redo, but redo all commands, which is sort of undo, is an important application. So, here we have uh, we had a, a, a text file with all the changes in the usual chunk format, so we can use the usual file-in to transform them in objects that are changes, then we can uh, create a change, connect to the change log that gives them some context, and validate the change 
if not, do we tell the user? If yes, we execute the change. This is the replay. The performance here is very simple. I will skip that. It's just remember that the change is essentially a message with more things. So once you recover the message, you execute the message. So the, the important part here, here for me is the applications. Because over the years, uh, we discovered that the applications were a lot. <laughs> Not just recover from disaster. So first, of course, the recovery log. Okay? All the time, save every change on disk. So the user types in things or moves the mouse does things and every change is registered in the recovery log. Auditing. Your system can show the users who changed what, when and how because you can read the changes because of the small text index. It's very simple. Here is a local review. You can uh, reduce uh, commands and you can do a little bit more. For instance, you can, from all the changes, you concentrate in one object in the GUI, I will show you an example, then filter all changes and select it just those that are related to this object and show them in the main menu, for instance. If I come here and say not 10 but 12, and not, uh, I don't know, this format, but uh, three decimals. And, I don't know, and not just a number, but a function. Uh, I changed my mind, I want a number. Uh, zero. What was the number? Uh, I come here and I recover the number. Okay? It's not undo, it's redo and no change. So I get here. I said, no, I changed my mind. I want the function. It was a complicated expression. So it's here. Not that complicated. Okay? okay? So this is important. Scripting. Uh, the, all your changes are saved on a text file on this. So you could potentially edit that file and create and you have a scripting language for your system. There are more applications. For instance, demos and tutorials. You can have the changes prepared with all the commands you want to perform. Uh, in the demonstration, and then you can go and perform each of them in sequence. So there will be no surprises in your talk. <laughs> and this is more interesting. Our kind of back compatibility issues. Uh, software uh, it changes all the time, but you have to uh, preserve back compatibility and be able to load models saved in all versions. This is a takes a lot of resources. So uh, sometimes it's easier to reload all changes than to migrate the model. At least it's another possibility in case the migration has some bad in some particular case. Merging. Merging objects, not every application needs to merge objects, but those applications that need to merge objects is uh, uh, have a probably a hard time because merging objects is a difficult operation, but merging changes is not. Here's a support. I have a client <coughs> with a problem. <coughs> Sorry. The client sends me the model because it needs help. I solve the problem, but if uh, it takes me, I don't know, a couple of days to solve the problem. When I send back the model, the user will have their own work in 
the mother, my mother, there is a synchronization problem. So instead of sending the user back all the model, I can send just the changes I introduced to the model. So this is help. So solve the user problem and send back the changes, not the whole thing. More applications, but reporting. Instead of saying, I was doing this and that bad thing happened, send me the changes. I will repeat and reproduce the bug. I did something, I don't remember what, but the system crashed. Okay, you don't remember. Look at the changes, or send me the changes. Testing. New programmers have to understand how to write unit tests because they still don't know the, the model, the software. So they can use the software as end user. This will generate changes with messages, selectors, they will immediately get ver very good clues how where to browse, where to go, where to put a halt. Okay? Regulation. Of course, unit testing is essential. The problem is, is not enough. You have to do much more testing, more traditional testing. And you have to uh, run other kind of tests from time to time. So, regulation is important. So, if you, ha you have more traditional testing, you have a better tester uh, doing things in your application, this uh, uh, session of testing will generate a file with all the changes. So if the beta tester keeps the file, then it will be very easy to replay the file automatically and you have a library of files that uh, can be used to test this new version of the software. Learning. Well, well when I have explained testing, I actually explain learning. <laughs> it's uh, uh, the changes uh, give uh, programmers that have no uh, knowledge of the system where to add a halt, for instance. In, in, in the testing, uh, what I mean was different, is the user uh, or the beta tester sends uh, a set of changes that generate a bug. So that the, by replaying them, I reproduce the bug. But I can do more. I can copy this and write the test unit, reproducing exactly the, the case and have the test. There are some more applications. For instance, metrics. You can count the number of commands the users can perform, because these are all the methods of the class, in the class of the wrapper. This is very important. You can estimate how many keystrokes the user requires, because keystrokes are uh, in the arguments of the commands. So if you uh, count the number of letters or numbers in, in the arguments of all the commands, you can know how many keystrokes uh, the user had to type in to get that object. So you can measure productivity. You can measure dedication as well because you, you have all this, uh, the, the, the name of the author and the timestamp. So you can see when this guy worked on this project for how long. So user behavior. Also you can track the areas of your software that are most use, use it. The more popular, the most popular. Understand users' workflow. Discover bad, bad practice patterns by, the, by end users. There are many research behind these things. Some other application. <laughs> Teamwork. You have several people working on the same software without um, a client uh, server thing. Just copies of the application. Okay, you can then uh, 
combine the changes into an official version of the model. Database conflict. You are using Jensen, you, of course, <laughs> you do some changes and then you commit and there is a conflict with other session. You could bring all your changes and say, and take a look and replay them again, I don't know, make many things. This is also interesting. Check in, check out. You now has the Jensen database and your notebook, you work here and download the project from the database to your uh, lab. Then you go home and do some work. When you are back in the office, then you can apply your changes back into the repository. Check in, check out. Now, these are things that uh, if you use the software for some time, or, or not the software, this uh, changes for some time, uh, uh, you will discover. But I wanted to uh, show you other applications that we found were possible uh, in our application, in this one. So I have a demo here. You can do this. Let me show you. Probably here it's better. Decision analysis is something that is uh, having more interest in, in the business. So, this, uh, building tools for decision analysis is very important. For instance, what if scenarios? You have a model, but what if this parameter here is different? Would be different. So, how we could manage that? Okay, we could try to recreate a new project or object with that a uh, new value for the parameter and make some comparison and then another one, another one. So what's a good approach to having multiple copies of the same option? Good approach we found with changes is this. We have some object, the project is a base. Then we create a copy and we give the copy to the user. So the user this copy is exactly the same as the original, but the user can start making, introducing changes to the copy, creating one scenario, okay? So the user changes this and creates some a scenario that is similar to the original, but not exactly the same. So when the user is done creating that scenario, we forget the scenario, but keep the changes, okay? Which is, uh, should be small, the text file. So you, we store the changes, the first one. Then we repeat the same. We copy again as many times as, as the user wants. So we create another change set, and another change set, and many scenarios that are variations of the same base model. Uh, but every scenario is a small text file made up of the changes. So this is a very uh, cheap way to capture many scenarios of even big projects because the size of the scenario is proportional to the number of changes. So can we now let the user recreate these scenarios. Well, we have all these changes. Every change set represents a possible scenario. So we again create a model of the base and, uh, sorry, a copy of the base. And we locate some scenario from the list. For instance, number three. So we apply now all these changes to the copy and generate 
the same scenario we had in the beginning in step 3 ok so it's very simple to save the changes and apply them later on the base this is a very clean uh, approach to having multiple scenarios on top of this of course you want to show differences and results many things but the underlying structure is very simple using changes and um, it has an important property because if you change the base model then because you are going to apply your changes on a copy of the base model the copies will inherit all the changes in the base model so it's a way to propagate all the changes from the base to every scenario this is very good so if you change in the base that change will be seen in every scenario this is a very important thing that you don't have if you have several copies of the whole thing are disconnected now between the, the base and each of these scenarios there is a parent-child relationship because if I change the base when I apply the changes I will see the changes of the base in the scenario so there is uh, some dependency in the parent-child relationship so if we have this relationship between the base and several scenarios we could do something more which is this we have an object, so we copy the object and create this parent-child like I explained. Now we create the second one. This is like having two scenarios, scenario A and scenario B. But now we can think of scenario B as the root. So we apply, apply the same mechanism to the root to this new root so instead of having a flat structure of several scenarios from the main model we can have a nested structure in the, with the shape of a tree so this is a decision tree implemented in the same way as in the case of scenarios but in uh, with a a focus on a local node on the tree so we create as many nodes as, as we want so we can implement things like this one here this, repre this node represents the base model the project now the project has has two scenarios some scenario with a high something and some other scenario with a low something and then in the high we have some yes and some no so this is a decision tree please do all the changes have to be in the same file for this view do you have to get all the changes no if you uh, you only need to uh, a way to locate the changes but in this specific implementation of this tool we are using the same file for all of them but this is an implementation in it so there's a follow-up question what would you do to create new changes when do you close one off how many do you end up with have got gigabytes and terabytes of change files no because you are for this kind of application you are creating very small uh, changes. Uh, every, you have a project and you want to create two scenarios of that project. In this scenario you modify some few things and in this scenario you modify some other few things. So just these small changes go to a file. So I think the question but, is when do you throw changes away? When, when you, well, um, never. There is no necessary, but what in, in our application, what we uh, do, but wait, probably uh, I'm uh, telling something in a way that you don't get the idea. Every project has their changes. You don't need to have only one file. Probably that was your question. It's not like in the change log in Smalltalk where everything goes there. No, it's not like that. Every 
project has its own set of changes. Every scenario has its own set of changes. We have many changes, many files with changes, are individual, okay? We are not using uh, a big file for everything. So, here, and here for instance, in some scenario in this decision tree, so I can edit this. So, editing is copying the base and then applying the changes that of that level. So I can here copy of the base to the changes. This is the way the users can go and create more copies, more scenarios, and throw away the copies and keep the changes for creating more scenarios and more decision trees. Uh, if, if we go back here, we can see also the changes of every scenario. Here, for instance, there's only one change. And I uh, know if I go here, there is another change. And here is um, the comparison between the value of this parameter in this scenario and the value of the same parameter in the base. But the important thing is that by Using, applying changes and uh, throwing away the, the, the copy of the model, you can play with the scenarios and uh, implement very uh, powerful tools for decision analysis. And you can add a lot of stuff here, but I wanted to tell you the main things. So we have scenarios, we have decision trees, we have Monte Carlo simulations. Um, I won't be into the details, but if you run a simulation of a model where the scenarios are at random, then you can transform every iteration of your simulation into uh, a change, and then, it, um, because of that, into a scenario. So you can effectively edit every Monte Carlo iteration and more than that, you can edit them all, or some portion that is interesting uh, to you, uh, with an a scenario uh, window where you can make comparisons and understand better the uncertainties in your project. Well, this so I, I wanted just to tell some influences because this is not that. Uh, uh, we are smart and came with a simple idea and implemented it in 10 minutes and we are happy and run in between the flowers, I don't know. It's not like that. We have the small change log from the gates. Uh, I remember 10 years ago, uh, there was um, a quick error recorder by Dan Ingalls. Then Valeria worked on uh, the, uh, the second part of that error recorder. Uh, we wanted to show the morphic wrappers, so we sent yeah. a demo with an event recorder to the Ningas, and he said, instead of saying, oh, the morphic wrappers, he said, oh, the demo recorder. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's time. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, great. That's all. Uh, remember, it's valid. Uh, question. Please. Yeah, uh, so you store the change sets instead of change, uh, storing copies of the scenarios. Yes. Does this depend on the fact that applying the change set is quicker than loading a full copy of the scenarios? Applying the changes is yeah. very, very Yeah, but very is, fast. Uh, do you take any action to measure that changes uh, can be applied? Yes, there are uh, validations that way I mentioned validations. Validations are very important. No, no, but I mean, uh, do you take the changes in the uh, edges in the design of your application to ensure that you can apply changes quickly? Or not only safely? Or just the. Uh, no, we didn't find any problem applying changes. The changes can be applied instantly. Very fast. Please. 
What uh, process do you use to make sure that your practical class is uh, complete uh, with some methods? Beta testers. <laughs> beta testers. Beta testers. Um, for your recovery log, you have to write every change to disk right away, right? Yes. So if this event, I don't know, if it's more than one line, how do you separate these events? Just find syntactically. No, it's a chunk. It's, um, it's the chunk format. When also, is uh, the the exclamation sign using to separate chunks of code. The compiler knows how to handle that, not me. Any other question? Okay, thank you.